Let's not say that in case <laughs> yeah. someone tries to break in here. Eric's home all the time, just staring at the door with a gun. <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> That's, job. <laughs> That's what he gets paid to do. <laughs> maintenance. <laughs> Mopping maintenance up the floor with all the dead bodies. People have tried to break in our house. Welcome back to the Shaking Not Scared podcast. Here with you as always, your hosts, Eric and Bibi. Today we're going to be talking about the 2002 film Resident Evil directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. But before we get into that, how are you, Bibi? I am running out of emotions to say when you ask me that question. I'm asking how you are, not how you feel. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing? No. You could be like, this is what I've done. Nothing. I've eaten every day, drinking every day. Yeah, we have drank every day. <laughs> like the irresponsible adults that we are. We had a super long weekend. It was, yeah. Happy, what is it, Labor Day? We did do some cool stuff this weekend. We went to hang out with our friends Daryl and Ellen and played some beer pong, which definitely isn't something we should be doing near our 30s, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was for old time's sake. It was. I have not played since like high school or college or something i was never good at it i was starting to notice the lingering smell of spilled beer and i was like this is not a memory i want <laughs> it brings you back yeah. to those college days it's a fraternity life it's disgusting we also went to the marvel pop-up if you guys follow us on instagram we posted all the really cool drinks at replay if you guys are familiar or, or anywhere near chicago they do a pop-up every so often and they have a marvel one i bought a t-shirt that says if half the people are gone that means more beer so <laughs> i mean i'm cool with that do you get to pick which people no <laughs> no yeah it was pretty fun they were good we didn't get 12 drinks per person or whatever <laughs> it may look like we went with a couple of people and everyone got different drinks that we just took pictures of i think we got every single one though right yes i think the only one we didn't get to try was one of the shots because they rotate them it was called i am inevitable and it sounded cool but it I sounds like they were out it. of the stuff that they needed to make it i imagine like a purple Thanos shot or something. You were saying it probably was like a car bomb, right? I wasn't. Enrique said that it was probably like a Jaeger bomb type mm, thing. A purple one. What creepy content you got for me? Lately, I've just been watching, and I do this ever since Disney Plus came out. I've been putting on the Treehouse of Horror from The Simpsons. You've left me out this year. Last year, you always let me join in, and this year, I just hear you listening to it in the background. Because we saw them all last year. I still want to see them. What about you for creepy content? Is that all? You, you've only been yep. watching Treehouse, really? Yeah, I, I feel like I haven't had a chance to watch that much since we've been recording episodes kind of back to back to back. I feel like we plan to watch a couple more new ones that have been out on Shudder and maybe Netflix, but we haven't gotten around to it yet. What's your creepy <laughs> content then? I continued to watch two sentence horror stories. I think it's kind of cool to just continue to talk about it because each of them is like a different story. But spoiler alert ahead of time if you want to watch it. This episode was like one of those makeup tutorials that you watch. It reminded me of that because it starts off with this girl who starts a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. She's like doing her makeup and the way that the episode proceeds is kind of like someone's breaking in, in the background but it and turns out not. that she's a serial killer or it's like one of those dark web dark things web. Oh. where they kill people there's a couple of twists in there okay that's pretty cool that sounds like an interesting one other than that i started watching clickbait a lot of people have been talking about it it seems like another uh black mirror that's what i thought but it's actually a cohesive series some guy is getting framed i'm not far enough yet to see what's going on but in the back of your mind you're thinking like is he guilty is he not this guy is being posted posted on the internet holding signs that say if this video stream gets to 5 million views i die he's also posting signs like i abuse women i've killed a woman and you're only one episode in yeah yeah i saw the trailer for it and it didn't really catch my attention i don't know it seems like stress inducing to watch that why does that stress you out? I don't know, because I like horror movies, and you would imagine it's stressful, but dramas. That's stressful for you? High-stake drama, thriller type stuff. Like, Where you're not sure what's happening, and so you're anxious because you want to know, but then you're doubting what you think is what's yeah. happening. And that's exactly what this kind of feels like. Cool. If that's all we got, you made the drink for this week. I did. So I'm going to call it the Red Queen Bramble, because it's kind of a bramble, but it's not gin-based. I actually made two variations of this drink, so I gave you one with rum, and I was looking at the ingredients strawberry triple sec and a little grenadine for color strawberry tends to go well with hennessy so i made one with hennessy we can try both and see whichever, which one's better whichever wins is the one we'll say is the episode yeah the we'll make the video on and then i just put a blue airhead kind of like the t-virus do you want to try with the straw because all everything's the, at the bottom yeah and then you can try mine i think mine's might be better hold on let's switch straws because <laughs> we only have one <laughs> contemplation because that tasted very different from mine yeah 
because it's dark rum. I mean, I like both. I think I like the Hennessy one better. I like this because I used ingredients that I imagined would be sweet, and it's not that sweet. It's kind of tart. So I am going to give it 4.5. I give it a 4. Are we just boring because we agree? No. You know I hate certain drinks. We just have been making drinks I like lately. Good. You didn't like the creme de menthe one. I did not. So, no. Take that back. <laughs> we haven't been agreeing. <laughs> well, good job. Go Thank give you. It, go give it a try. It's pretty good. So you got fun facts for me then? I do. I have plenty. So I was super excited about this because Resident Evil is one of my favorite game series. Several of the cast members that had never played any of the Resident Evil games, but Mila Jovovich and Michelle Rodriguez were both very familiar. Michelle was such a big fan herself that she asked her agent to let her know the moment they heard of a script being written for Resident Evil. Oh, damn. And Mila's brother was a big fan, making it one of the main reasons she took on the role. Was her husband the director of this film? He became her husband after they were ah. working on these films, yeah. So just because some of the actors weren't familiar with the games doesn't mean they were off the hook. They all had to play the original games all the way through, and those who couldn't just watch someone else do it for them. <laughs> That'd be me. Yeah. I'm terrible at playing games. <laughs> and you throw up just watching. Okay, but you play the most chaotic <laughs> way possible. What were you we playing? Oh, we were playing Animal Crossing and you were the main oh character and I was just playing with you and I'm just like running in circles. <laughs> and that enough stressed me out because Animal Crossing is supposed to be what's called what is it? It's a whole genre of gaming. It's like, not like lazy gaming, but it's uh, like a de-stress thing uh -huh. where it's not like what you would imagine traditional video games to be and you just decided to make it as chaotic as possible for me. <laughs> That's because you'd be like checking your mail and I'd just be running in circles in the background from one side of the field to the other. What am I supposed to be doing? I can't read my mail. Looking for resources? I was. Elsewhere. In circles. You stress me out. Don't tell me that that's not how like real life is. We were literally that is a couple episodes are. ago talking about us being at Michael's and me just walking in circles in the aisle. Yeah. I think that's also why it stressed <laughs> me out because I was like, you can't even chill out in this game? <laughs> George A. Romero. This is a fun one. George A. Romero was a large inspiration for the original video games and was actually brought on as a director and writer before being cut by the studio early on. What? Yeah. Why? I would have loved to have seen this because apparently his version of the script was truer to the video games than what we ended up with. Yeah, that's disappointing, especially since he's considered the grandfather of the zombie film. Yeah. Unlike in other films we've seen so far where the directors have given the zombie actors little to no direction... These actors were professional dancers who had to attend the type of boot camp for how to act like zombies. Don't know if I would say it translated as different on the final product. How original can you be after the standards for the zombie movie are set? That might be why zombie movies for a long time have been hard to make. It's interesting because Walking Dead is super popular now. I don't know if I could say it still is. I don't know. I do remember a time where everyone was watching it every Sunday. It was like the Game of Thrones of its time. I think the main series is coming to an end. Oh my god, it's still going? I feel like when shows go on for way too long, they lose what's good about them. Like Rick. When I last watched, Rick was still in it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But Rick leaves the series, and I'm like, Rick What's was like the point? my favorite yeah. part. Yeah, he's like the OG. The main That's guy. like getting rid of the main character from 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later. Like, I don't give a shit about that family. I want to no. know more about what happened to this guy. They're also trash. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> is that it for fun facts? No. Got more? I got more. Alice is a completely original character from the film universe that has not a single hint of appearance in any of the video games. Not even a little bit. Not even a mention. Nothing. That one I knew. She isn't even named a single time in the entire film. Yeah, that's what I brought up to you while we were watching it. It's done on purpose by the director so to emphasize the creation of this unknown character right in front of the audience. Just because I've seen the films, you know her name because almost all the films start with My Name's Alice. I used to work for the Umbrella Corporation. Mm -hmm. so She is credited with the name Alice in the credits, though. Oh, okay. So, so you, you would have to stick around to the credits to find out her name. They do that with a lot of these characters that you do not know their name and suddenly Alice just knows their name in the middle of... Cray cr crisis. Chaos, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crayons. Crayons. <That's> a <laughs> At the time of this film, there weren't very many films with female heroes. So this film definitely paved the way along with other films like Underworld just one year later in 2003. I think we mentioned that in the previous episode. I used to love these. Watching them now, the effects are not that great. <laughs> no. It's very early 2000s. They're not terrible, though. They could be much worse. I think what's iconic about these early 2000s films is the music. It's all that super heavy doo-doo. It's almost like the Mortal Kombat. You didn't watch Mortal Kombat, but that doo-doo, doo-doo, doo-doo. And it's like electronica slash metal ah, action shooting guns. Yes, uh, it's very leather. Early two thousands. <laughs> I think her look in the red dress with the boots looks cool. Yeah, I loved that look. You know how there's clothes that's iconic 
in series. This one's very much the rat dress. And then it's like an underworld. It's the whole leather get up. I know. So uncomfortable. Not practical for either of them. But, yeah. you know, we're They'd... not there yet. Yeah, it's sweaty as hell. Hard to move in. Yeah. You would die immediately. Wait, whose turn is it to speed run? I'm not ready for this. What even happens? We just watched this movie and I feel like brain dead. I couldn't <laughs> even tell you what happened. One, okay. two, three, go. So we get introduced to Raccoon City. We get introduced to Umbrella Corp, which is this company that does like bio and uh, like genetic testing and stuff like that in the background. But they're like, well, we're, we're a great company. We love the world and whatever. But they all have all this shady shit going on in the background. So we get introduced to this office full of people. They get trapped. And uh, somebody throws like a virus and or the thing full of blue liquid. And then everybody gets fucked. And then we get introduced to Alice and Alice wakes up, and then she's like, what? And then there's all these things happening, and this guy comes in out of nowhere, and she's in this mansion, and these people crash through the window. And then they end up downstairs, and they're like, you used to work for Umbrella. You forgot shit. And then this other guy's like, yeah, I also forgot. And then they go downstairs, they find out that the Red Queen is the one who, like, locked everything down. And they find out that the virus had spread. And so they were like, oh, yeah, somebody here, like, made it breach, and we don't know what happened, but we got to figure it out. we got to destroy the Red Queen. we got to unlock this. And then they do, and they unlock everything. A lot of people die. And zombies appear. There's this monster. The guy. It turns out that the the her supposed husband was actually like watching her when she was the one who. It, 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 <laughs> oh, there's too much happening in this movie. <laughs> I think you made the common mistake of like over explaining in the beginning, and then you have to rush through the well, rest. Yeah. Wait, but this one we have to take a shot. No, let's pretend we did. But no. <laughs> I'm just tired of all the drinking. Oh, okay. Drinks more. <laughs> yeah, chugs. Chugs what Drink. I have. Fine. But if people disagree that we didn't take a shot. They don't need to know. We'll just pretend we took one. They're going to come at us. Oh, uh, that was disgusting. I wow, hated I hated it. Ugh. Ugh. Crying. <laughs> Dying. Let me look for a overview. Okay. According to IMDb, based on the popular video game, Mila... Jovovich? Jovovich. I think. And Michelle Rodriguez star as the leaders of a commando team who must break into the Hive, a vast underground genetics laboratory operated by the powerful Umbrella Corporation. There, a deadly virus has been unleashed, killing the lab's personnel and resurrecting them as the evil undead. The team has just three hours to shut down the lab's supercomputer and close the facility before the virus threatens to overrun the Earth. I don't feel like they're worried about it overrunning the earth. No, they're just like, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. Also, I like how it's like, Alice and Michelle both have to get out of there. Like, none of the other characters exist. <laughs> Michelle's like a side character, if anything. Rain? Yeah, she's not even the one that makes it. Spoiler alert. Are they the only prominent actresses in this film? The most well-known. There's, there's the guy who ends up being her husband. I've seen him in other stuff, but... Her fake husband? Yeah. That guy that plays Matt. I do not like him because... They make it seem like he's supposed to be hot and his hair is terrible, spiky, early 2000s hair. It looks like they tattooed his hair in. I, I don't like it. <laughs> anyway. You ready? 21st century, Raccoon City. We get a little spiel about what Umbrella Corp has been doing. They're like Amazon. They bring you your packages. They make your life better. They have Google Homes in every house. They uh, have drones driving cars. Buses make your life better. Ads everywhere. No, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> that is not what they say about the Umbrella Corporation. It is. Corporation They're like it's a corporation that is like so well known that it's in every home. It has done a lot to advance human life. But in the background, there's underground things happening. Bioweapon research, genetic testing. Until Amazon comes out and says that they have been running genetic testing in the background of their company, I will not agree with this analogy. <laughs> Why? You don't think they're capable? I mean, they probably are doing it. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Them, Google, Apple, all of them, they're working together. They're making one umbrella. <laughs> they're going to come out eventually. It makes sense now. Did you see when the pandemic first started, That when they were saying that the virus came from one specific city, they said that there was a company that had the umbrella logo? I think I did see something like that. <laughs> and they were like, oh shit, it's happening. <laughs> It reminded me of something else. When COVID happened, weren't people saying that it was like genetic warfare or... I mean, people say that anytime anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> Someone sneezes, genetic warfare. Yeah. That's not even right. What is it? Biological warfare. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they've been doing bioweaponry, testing, genetic experiments. And we get introduced to this lab. There's a guy in a suit and he's holding a, a robot that with its mechanical arms is grabbing a green vial and blue vial. Packs it all up, walks out and just tosses a blue one at one of the tables. I don't think you see that he tosses it until it's revealed at the end. I think we just see one of them breaking. I mean, you assume it didn't Somebody just like come out of it. nowhere. <laughs> Could be. You've never just dropped stuff at work. I mean, he's the only one in the room. You assume it's him. <laughs> I've never been at work and just a vial out of nowhere just hits a table. Well, that's good. 
it looks like fumes are coming off the vial. A lot of this film is close-ups of the security cameras in the hive. The AI system that we later find out is called the Red Queen detects that this vial has been broken and starts an emergency shutdown. But the employees aren't aware that that's what's happening. All of them keep calling this a fire drill. We also don't know for sure that it's AI at this point. We just think yeah. it's someone behind the camera. Someone might just be like murderous rampage on these people at work. This scene literally gives me an anxiety attack because I think it would be my worst nightmare when you're trapped in an elevator and the suspension cords try to snap. We get this group of people stuck in the elevator. One guy is kind of panicking. You get the sense that he's a little bit claustrophobic. This woman makes the awful mistake of trying to squeeze out the elevator to try and get help. It's a very tiny opening and even though she's a very tiny woman, it just does not seem possible. While that's going on, we see this lab that we initially saw the T-virus in is being flooded by the, what are those called? The, the fire thingy? Sprinklers? The sprinklers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fire thingy. <laughs> they are raining fire. The place is enclosed, so the water has nowhere to go. They are essentially going to drown if they don't figure out a way to turn off the sprinkler system. The AI has also released a poisonous gas in just the cubicles of this company. I was confused with all the things going on. Did the AI just not know how to handle each situation? It was like throwing different things in different directions. <laughs> yeah, also later it says that it went through the air ducts, but you would just enclose the people that were most immediately impacted by it, not the whole freaking building. <laughs> like, if you're on the completely other side of the building, it hasn't even hit you yet and the machine already <laughs> killed you. The AI was just like, fuck it, I'm killing everybody. You know what? Just in case. We go back to the elevator scene. As the woman opens up the elevator, she sees all the people dead from the guests. She's sticking her head out. She becomes stuck, obviously, and the elevator starts moving. The cut we get is of her head literally just stuck outside the elevator. Is it? Yes. It goes up and then the screen goes black. Oh, I thought you meant like we get a shot of her headless on the ground. We don't. It flashes immediately to Alice. Which I find strange because there are gruesome scenes in this movie and they were like, that's not one of them. Too early. <laughs> Too <laughs> soon. I remember that scene from the trailer. Yeah. There are so many scenes in this movie that stuck with me. I actually thought Matt's character is one of the people that gets sliced in the laser scene later on, but I think that doesn't happen until one of the later movies and it doesn't actually happen. It's like one of her nightmares or something. I don't know that he ever does because he ends up being Nemesis in the next one. I thought it was like a nightmare sequence. I could be oh, wrong maybe. and confusing it with 13 right. Ghosts because it was another dude that kind of <laughs> looked like him. So she gets up, she's like in the shower naked. And she's she's also around. very dry for someone who's literally been passed out in the shower with the water on for four hours. You could dry in four hours. Just but the water's there. still on. Was it on? Yes. Oh, I can't remember. I was like, why is she so dry? <laughs> <laughs> She's so fucking ashy. <laughs> she needs some she moisture. Needs some lotion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She doesn't need lotion because that's how you die in movies, remember? Which movie? Friday the 13th, put your lotion on and get oh, called that's out true. to get murdered. So she's dazed and confused. She's in this giant mansion. She goes to this bedroom where there's a red dress. I don't know that this is a thing uh, officially, but this red dress. I think is a nod to Ada Wong's red dress in the in the comics. In the video games, there's a character named Ada Wong. Just being clear right now, the first Resident Evil game I ever played growing up was Resident Evil 4. And Resident Evil 4, Leon Kennedy is the main character. But Ada Wong makes an appearance. And in the entire game, she's wearing a long red dress and kicks ass. Still highly impractical. Oh, yeah, for sure. Part of her aesthetic is that she's in this dress and doing flips. And it looks cool. Yeah. She does it in heels, though. That's even worse. <laughs> so she finds this dress, and then there's a note on the counter that says today's the day your dreams come true she comes out of the room wearing the dress already and boots this movie also takes like every opportunity possible to show you mila naked, naked. yeah her nipples side yep, boob for some reason i remember growing up watching these movies knowing i was gonna get an ounce of uh nudity just a smidgen <laughs> of side boob and it, she does not have boobs she's no, a she very doesn't. thin woman <laughs> <laughs> you're also getting some of the cameras someone's watching her and observing her she finds a wedding photo in one of the other rooms this whole mansion seems very long i was wondering if it was like kind of a nod to a video game like when you start playing a game that has no direction and you're kind of like do I go here? Do I go there? What's my character even doing? Yeah, there are nods, obviously, to gameplay. In the video games, you know, when you kill a zombie or a monster or another person, the creature would die if you looked at it, the body was there. But then you would turn around for like a second or leave the area and then come back and it was gone. Uh huh. In the scene where the characters get chopped up by the lasers, the bodies were just on the ground and they go and they talk to the Red Queen and then they come back out and they're like, where'd the bodies go? That's a nod mm. to the video game. Because <laughs> you come back to the area and the bodies are gone. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> 
The mansion, I think, could just be a nod to the fact that I think the first game also takes place like in a house. I thought the drawer being full of guns too is a nod to the games because when we were playing Resident Evil 7, do you remember it's like there's those bird cages full of guns and you can't access them unless you have coins? Games like these will have things like that where you need money to be able to unlock or you need weaponry. a code. Yeah, it could all just be a nod to the video games. She ends up going outside and gets startled by the crows in the distance. The wind picks up and starts to kind of storm and then just suddenly gets pulled in by this guy who we later find out's named Matt. And then these dudes just crash through the window. They like arrest him. They push her against the wall. And one dude's like, report, report, screaming in her face. Matt's like, I'm a cop. You can't do this to me. They're like asking each other, do we kill him? And they're like, nah, fuck it, just bring him. One of the other characters also mentions, maybe it's going to take her a while before she starts to remember because she's still feeling the symptoms from the security. I think the security triggers this gas that knocks them out and makes them forget things. For safety reasons? Uh, yeah, I don't understand out? the reason uh, yeah. for knocking them out if they're, they're like, She might not know yet. And then they drag her along either way. They are trying to gain entrance to the hive, which we find out is right underneath the mansion where she lives. They stumble upon a train system that isn't working. While this is going on and they're trying to figure out things, you hear like growling and whispering things in the distance that we later come to find out is the people that were trapped in the hive. Michelle's character, Rain, is helping set up the, would you call it a trolley or just a train? Is it like a tram? A tram. Okay, right? so neither of them. <laughs> I don't know. What distinguishes a train versus a tram? Oh, let's not have this conversation. You know what I mean? Like when you go to the airport and it's like, the tram, but oh, it's yeah. a train too. It's a shuttle. <laughs> okay, so is it a train, a tram, or a shuttle? <laughs> a new game. <laughs> it's whichever one will hit you harder if you're standing on the rails. That's a train. If it's a tram, it's a softer hit. If it's a shuttle, someone will. I like will... how that's where your mind goes <laughs> to know. distinguish them. Which one's going to kill me harder? <laughs> harder. <laughs> Maybe it's the, the number of carts it has. Because the trams are usually like two carts. And the train is like a ton, right? I don't know. I'm fucking know. I'm not a train. I don't speak English, okay? Scientist? An engineer? No. When I used to tell people that I was studying engineering, they were like, oh, so like, what kind of trains are you going to drive? And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Not that that is a very funny question to ask someone. <laughs> like, just assume they're going to be working with trains. Yeah. So, Brain actually finds a man trapped inside the train, tram, shuttle, <laughs> whatever it the is. The truttle. The truttle. <laughs> That's good. Let's go with that. He also has no memory of who he is or how he got there. She checks her wedding ring and notices that the wedding ring says Umbrella Corp on it. Property which, of the Umbrella Corporation. The fuck? Don't give me a wedding ring from your work. You mean in your 10 wedding rings, you don't have one that says Property of the Umbrella Corporation? Property of Viviana Corporation? Corporation. Yeah. Vivi Corp. <laughs> Vivi Corpse. That's morbid. Well, I always used to read Corpse. C-O-R-P-S. Like Corpse. Corpse. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. He also doesn't know who he is. They get to the entrance of the hive. Alice finally decides that she needs some questions answered, and she's pretty bold about it, and is like, you're going to tell me what's going on now? For someone who has no memory, I think I'd be like, what the fuck is happening? Exactly. You would want to know what's happening now. Otherwise, you're just following these people with guns. You know, you're definitely your not red dress. equipped to do the same thing and be there with them. We get this graphic of the hive <laughs> and what it is, mapping out how the hive looks, where it is, while the sergeant whose name is never said because we only get a few people's names, I think. He dies pretty fast, too. Yeah, very, like, anticlimactic. Basically explains that the Red Queen, the AI system that runs the Hive, went homicidal and murdered everyone there. Their job is to go in and shut her off and try to see if there's any survivors. Odd job, I don't think I would assume there's any survivors if this thing went berserker mode, and there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> the graphic just shows that the train that they took from the mansion was a, a cover truddle. for the entrance. Yeah, the truddle. He was like, damn, your marriage is fake. Fake marriage, but they were really fucking. <laughs> they really were. A little too deep in the cover there. In the covers. <laughs> if you will. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> the Hive's defense made them lose their memory. But I don't understand that still, like... For what? Probably so they wouldn't go looking. To see what happened? Yeah. But it only lasts four hours, so they're going to come look after <laughs> they remember. It's true. Yeah, I don't understand the defense mechanism of making people lose their memory. So they enter this office building. I thought it was crazy that they enter and it looks like it's day outside. And the guy's like, if you're underground, it's probably a little better to make people think that they have a view. We find out that the team is actually there to shut down the Red Queen. And they're like, who's the Red Queen? State of the art. AI. British. Young girl. Modeled after the creator's daughter. And she's creepy. <laughs> creepy little British voice. Alice, before moving on, they see these kind of like towering boxes or crates, whatever you want to call them, that she looks into. It seems like there's a creature inside with a bunch of tubes in it and looks like flesh. It's got a brain. And it shows they're keeping something down here. JD and Rain stay behind with Matt. This is the scene that I remember the most about this movie. I'm going to call it the Tunnel of Nightmares. They reach the hub where 
the Red Queen's intelligence is. I don't know if they say exactly what it's called. The mainframe. Don't know if that's the right terminology. They're hacking the mainframe. <laughs> so at the end of this tunnel is their objective. They're carrying this giant equipment. Did you, did you write down the name of this? I feel like I do not have the proper term- giant terminology. Equipment? Yeah. You're talking about the that's going to that fry sliding. it. I thought for a second that it was an EMP because they keep talking about it's a machine that releases a giant impulse of electricity and will shut her down for a little bit. I'm like, that's not an EMP because EMP is like knock out all the electricity. But this seems like something that's like a mini EMP. A mini EMP is what we're going to go with. Yeah. So they're carrying a mini EMP and their goal is to get it across this hallway of nightmares. Yes, with half the team staying behind. The guy who's trying to override the system, was that Kaplan? Yeah. Okay. So he, would you say, breaks down the defenses? He's like trying to, the main... They think it's safe. Walks (laughs) down the hall, puts that little flip phone on the wall. Nothing's more destructive than a flip phone. (laughs) Numbers are starting to appear on the little lock thing. The door opens and he's like, coast is clear. The doors lock on both sides and they're like freaking out. This is the scene that like I remember vividly as a kid because this small, it looks like a blue light. We find out it's a laser starts to appear on the opposite side of the tunnel and is coming towards them. They don't know what it is, so they just duck down. For some reason, the girl has to have the worst And she's looking at it. (laughs) She literally hears when the dude's like, duck down. I'm not going to say anything because this would probably be me. (laughs) Because I have awful reflexes. You do. (laughs) Can confirm. (laughs) The first hint that we get that something is wrong is that one of the officers on the ground's fingers have been sliced off because he touched it. He dropped with his hands up. Who falls like that? (laughs) He didn't even get the worst of it because as we look up, the woman that just did not duck her head completely slices off which then makes me question why they didn't do that in the beginning scene with the elevator but it's budget you gotta save the budget save your scares yeah as kaplan is panicking trying to get the system to shut down another light seems to appear and i just feel so bad for these people this is where the anxiety comes in yeah because you think you're about to dodge it yes and some of them do but one guy completely misses the jump and just gets cut in half the problem is that it comes low and then when he jumped it comes up right as he jumps and it just chops him in half and i think the only one left is the leader it's it's funny but it's not funny because kaplan literally deactivates this machine as it becomes one line that he's ready to dodge and then it suddenly turns into a grid yeah (laughs) a cube slicer a flat laser (laughs) slices him into a million of little pieces and literally stops right behind him because that's when kaplan finally was able to get it to shut down too late you would have stepped one foot back you would have been fine the effect is gross because it happens and you can see alice behind like covering her face like in shock blood. but did you see that when it cuts through his eye his eye oozes like yeah. liquid i, was like, oh, I thought like, it was like he was crying or something i thought it was that his eyeball liquid like, came ooze. out yeah. oh, i guess that wouldn't make sense right because it would cauterize the wound it's right. like with a lightsaber when you get cut it burns and slices at the same time so like if you do it too late a grape it would still have juices coming out of it a grape is too small i think it would just burn the grape. i'm thinking something <laughs> juicy you know it would would immediately evaporate right because isn't that supposed to be like super high heat actually maybe his eye would have popped because of the heat Ugh, that's yeah. not something i want to think about well now that everyone's dead <laughs> basically we get kaplan saying that they have to continue the mission and and is afraid as fuck as he takes the bag by himself he gets startled because alice is like i'm here right behind him I got you i would be startled too bitch why didn't you come in the beginning we just saw everyone get sliced to pieces <laughs> don't be doing that i was thinking about how calm she is Right after this. I don't know if Mila is a good actress or she's just pretty enough that they could just zoom into her face a lot and she looks scared and that's like acting. Because that's literally all that happens in this movie. She's just like, what's happening? Isn't that always what happens in zombie movies? Is that the main character is always just dazed and confused? But how often do they zoom into their face like that? I can kind of tell the director liked her. Mm, mm. He liked her face. He liked her face. (laughs) And how scared it was. Well, that's not good. Yeah. So they take the EMP to the Red Queen. The hologram appears and it's telling them to stop. Come on, please don't do it. You're going to regret this. You're all going to die down here. She also gives an explanation of what happened, which is that she detected the biologic in the air. Is it about how it's airborne or it's liquid, then it's airborne, then it goes to the bloodstream? Which is like, pick a lane. (laughs) (laughs) You chose all of the above (laughs) virus. That's not cool. I just make sure it takes everybody with it. Everything. Yes. Including dogs. So it was extremely difficult to contain. So her only choice was to murder everybody, Mm -hmm. which makes no sense because the dead rise, but whatever. She's like, they're dead anyway. The EMP though, or mini EMP, mini EMP, goes off. She's gone. All the systems are reset. 
All the doors are open. Rain and JD stayed behind with the cop. They start to hear the noise. Rain's like, stay here, I'll go check it out. This is when we get introduced to our first zombie. Just, 20, uh, 30 minutes into this movie. <laughs> Rain goes and checks it out, and there's a person in a lab coat that's like leaning up against the wall, and they're like, hey, you survived. Are you okay? It attacks her and bites the shit out of her hand. Michelle Rodriguez is always a kick-ass character in anything that she does. Yeah, she always plays like the fighter. Also, they like only gave her lines where she swears in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I'm like all she lot. says. Yeah. The guy comes back and he's like, oh, what the hell? Because I hear her gunshot. And he fires shots at her knees because he thinks, I can't just kill them. Michelle Rodriguez just pulls out her machine gun and launches it in the distance. And the zombie goes flying in one of those very not great early 2000 effects styles. Yep. The guy's like, I shot it five times. Why didn't it die? And they turn around and it's gone. Kaplan, Alice, and Thanks. Spencer meet back up with them. That's when they start to get surrounded. We get introduced to the first few. One of them's carrying an axe and it's got like a broken leg. You see a lot of zoom ins on the eaten away faces. Capcom created the game series. The president of Capcom USA and Capcom Japan were some of the zombies in that first scene. Oh, cool. Yeah, as actors, so it's pretty cool. That's cool. I also wondered if the makeup on these zombies was CGI. It looks like right. some of it was and some of it wasn't. Right? Some of it was. Some of it, The ones where they tried to get more deteriorated faces look CGI. It wasn't that bad. It was For not that bad. 2002, it was fine. But sometimes I feel like practical effects could get a better result. For sure. This is like one of those instances. Don't forget that they also had to spend a lot of money probably on the CGI for the monster later. Yes, there's some moments of CGI that I will point out that take you out of the movie a little bit. It looks like Venom. It does. <laughs> yeah, that's how, literally in my notes. I'm like the Venom zombie. <laughs> those creatures are in the game. Do they like, have a name? Like, I don't know. Probably, right? Probably, yeah. Does not look it up. You want me to? Maybe, so we know what to call them for the rest of the episode. Lickers. Lickers. Wow. Yeah, it's Creative. From the Resident Evil 2 game. Nice. They're shooting at them and nothing happens. In the chaos of shooting and they're not dying, they're also shooting at these tanks I mentioned earlier that have tubes. And that's where these creatures, the lickers, come from. What a... Lickers. Highly sexualized name. <laughs> well, they got a tongue. Giant tongue. A few of those tanks blow up. The zombies are on fire. Oh, I think it was crazy. Matt's got, obviously, handcuffs on. This entire time. And I think when Michelle Rodriguez's character or JD drops the keys, they fall into a grate and he's, like, underneath some platform or whatever. The zombie that's on fire is trying to get at him and he keeps kicking at it and trying to get the keys out of that grate how impossible that would not happen is that <laughs> he's He's surrounded and Alice is the one who helps him, right? Alice is getting flashbacks, basically showing us that she was in the process of actually selling out the Umbrella Corporation. She was giving someone access to their information, hoping that it would go public to bring them down. We don't get the full flashback. Later on, we see that all she wants is for the corporation to be brought down because she knows that they have this virus and the antivirus and is kind of suspicious of what they are going to do with it. Kaplan, while all the chaos is happening because he's like the tech dude, yeah. he's trying to unlock the door but keeps panicking because he's forgetting the nervous code. and forgetting the code. JD goes in and they're like, what's the code? And the Spencer dude is just like standing there. Oddly calm. He's like, what's the code, guys? Yeah, I've just been standing here because I couldn't open the door. Otherwise, I wouldn't have waited. He's a dick, obviously. Kaplan screams the code over to jd and jd's like how hard was that and the door opens up and it's just the horde that sucks him in and michelle rodriguez just gets bit up this whole movie she really does because she just throws herself in after jd and then one of them bites her arm again this is where they get separated because alice's character ends up wandering through what looks like the lab where the virus was initially released there is the cages of the dogs that we saw earlier and they are chewed through and they have escaped she sees one coming towards her and she locks herself in a, a lab room. As she turns around, she finds one of the lab technicians, security possibly, because they have a gun on them. And she has that moment of like sleeper agent where she remembers her training and fights him off. She does this horrible effect that I've always hated where they string the character in the air to make it seem like they are jumping really high and kicking. <laughs> <laughs> it looks bad. It's looked bad in literally every movie and show that I've ever seen it. And it takes you out of it. It's better than the karate kid, hold your arms up to the side, and then just kick. Which seems effect. super, like, homicidal. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> kicking someone in the face like that. <laughs> homicidal? Yeah, like you were trying to kill them. You think so? Well, I, I would about, not like to get kicked like that. I thought about that yesterday when we were at that bar, and I was like, what if they did follow us, those dudes? Oh, you, know, you were was, gonna karate kick. Well, I did do Taekwondo. I'm a black belt, okay? Even though you make fun of me i can i was licensed to kill oh my god <laughs> well apparently so does alice 
<laughs> she she does, kills a dead person. She kills a Again. dead person with a horrible in midair kick. I always just think of Ozzy Man reviews when I think of like flips and kicks. It's like, puppy, <laughs> kick you, spready. And then yes. that zombie just went and laid down and drank a mid strength beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she knocks the zombie out. And, and at that moment, the dog that was on the side of the door goes around and crashes through the window. I just think it's cool how they get these dogs to do this acting. I think they're wearing suits, right? Some of them seem like real dogs. They're not CGI so, the entire time. It seems like they're wearing some kind of like meat suit. We should get a meat suit for Loki. Oh, gross. Can you imagine? That'd be so cool. And you can be Alice with the red no, dress. No, it would not be cool. And I'll be a raccoon He cop. would eat it. He can't eat it if he's wearing it. Yes, he can. <laughs> but literally a... just lift his paw and start nibbling on it. I'll be know I'm going to look up a meat suit for Loki. Oh, dear God. Yep. Okay. I'm going to be a raccoon city cop. Why not be Matt who turns into that? Nemesis? Thing? Damn, that's extensive. I'll be Nemesis one day, but... <laughs> that's start, a lot of work. start one step at a time. Start small. Fuck, yeah. But the dogs go to attack her and she ends up shooting it. And then when she turns around, the rest of the dogs have come around. There's so many. <laughs> so many. And this is one of those scenes where you can tell that they CGI'd everything because it's not CGI'd well. She is very focused on like far ahead of her and shooting. And then one dog it comes at her very close to her. She's shooting nowhere near <laughs> it, does not even make eye contact with it. And it gets shot in the head and falls out. For those listening, Vivi's pointing a gun at me and pointing at the side of her face like a dog's like right by her. Right by the side of my <laughs> face. But I'm shooting. Like, at me at me but the dog dies at me <laughs> yeah you had to be there <laughs> okay. she unloads the whole clip though and runs out turns to the left and there's one more and she just sprints away from it does that one ever catch up? Does she kill it? I don't see it ever no. again. While this is going on, Matt is going around investigating the cubicle areas and finds his sister's desk, who we find out was... Lisa. Lisa, the contact that Alice had to infiltrate the corporation. Matt sees Lisa, and he's like, Lisa? And he just lets her attack She's him. drunk. Yeah, she's drunk. Like in Shaun of the Dead. Alice comes out of nowhere and beats her head in with a block from one of the desks. <laughs> Giant paperweight. <laughs> you saw it? It was like your resin. resin. Stuff. Cube, yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like. <laughs> that's when I think she remembers, oh crap, this is my contact because she sees her body on the floor. And yeah. Matt's basically giving an exposition about, you know, I'm here because I've also been trying to bring Umbrella down, but they wouldn't have let me because of all my credentials and would have seen that I'm involved in all this stuff. So my sister, Lisa, was the only option to do this because it had to be inconspicuous and it had to be someone real. without a background. Yeah. He mentions that he's on BICAP. Which is odd because BICAP is the system that was created when serial killers became more prominent and more well known. So it's a record of violent criminals. Hmm. So He's when in he that? said he was in BICAP, I was like, was this man a serial killer? Or maybe he was registered that way because they were trying to get him away. It stands for Violent Crime Apprehension Program. And it basically keeps track of people's records and fingerprints. So say if you commit a crime in Iowa and you got away with it and now you're in California and you commit another crime and they find your prints, they can match you and, and know that you're like one suspect that's been traveling. That's cool. Good thing that exists now. It came about <laughs> way too late, if you yeah. ask me. I think it was like not developed until all of the serial killers had already happened, like Manson. God, what's his name? Dahmer. Dahmer. The big ones. The, the biggies, but there's one I'm thinking of in particular. Ed Kemper. All those. Mindhunters about this. That show was boring. I wanted to like it, it's just I couldn't. I watched one episode and I was like, it didn't even get to the serial killer part. I read the book that inspired that show. Is it better? Well, it's very much professional. It's the cop who started Vicap. I think I remember that a lot of people would talk about in the show, the Ed Kemper scene. I remember reading it like from the officer's point where he actually had an interview with Kemper and he realized that they were switching guards and he was like potentially in danger. I don't know. I'm a snob who's going to be like, read the book, but whatever. No, yeah, do it. It's okay. <laughs> It's our show. We say what we want. Say what I fucking want. Okay. okay. So he's on Vicap. He's a violent criminal. Yeah. I was just saying that Umbrella probably just framed him and has him under all these things because they know he exists. You know, it's and, possible he's made enemies. Alice is like, fuck, could kill your sister. What? It's my fault. I'm the contact. My bad. But she doesn't tell him. Not yet. The rest of the group finds them. They end up making their way into that room, right? There are so many jump cut scenes that do not make sense in this film where they're in the middle of something very high action and then it just cuts to something else like they didn't know how to transition it have you noticed yeah what else do you do if you're in an office building you're just going from one office to the other <laughs> yeah but there's zombies attacking you there's not that many zombies in this other than like the horde and that one there's area. a couple horde 
boards in later scenes too. Like you would think that the offices would be infested, crawling, infested, them. especially if it's like a whole the, a name the hive. I think it said it held like, five hundred employees. So I don't think we see five hundred zombies. Mm. Count them. Go back and count right, every you know, single one. <laughs> Rain is the one who mentions containment is the failsafe. So their only way out is to get back out through the mansion. There's a problem because the failsafe is that if they're not back within an hour, the whole thing will lock down and they'll be trapped on there. So Alice's idea is we need to turn the Red Queen back on because she'll help us. And everybody's like, no, hell no, that's a bad idea. And she's like, well, no, we have leverage against her because we'll have her threatened with another EMP. A we'll mini. Fry her. A mini EMP. A little cute baby EMP. Mini P. It just sounds like I'm saying mini P. It does <laughs> Like that. They turn the Red Queen back on and start asking her all the obvious questions. Like I warned you, didn't I? Yeah. Well, not really. <laughs> you kind of missed the part of The Walking Dead. Right. <laughs> She's like, that's another franchise. Sorry. Ask me correctly. <laughs> Basically, she explains that the T-Virus reanimates the dead. No mm-hmm. intelligence, basic needs, need to eat, all stuff. Yeah, your basic zombie background. We're going to say that for the next three episodes. <laughs> I know. I wonder if people are going to get tired of us covering zombies. It's okay. It's almost over. Because they do be following a, a specific formula. They always got to find out what zombies are. They always got to get bit when they find the first one. And they got to, like, not kill a person who's bit because they don't know that they're going to transform yet. There's got to be a blonde that doesn't know what's going on at all times. At all movie. times, at all times, a <laughs> blonde doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> so she says that the virus, the virus, the virus, the virus is protean. It's liquid to air, air to blood. A uh, I think what enough. makes it protean is that it's like all these forms of transmission. Is that is that what protean is? I mean, that's the first time I've heard that word. It sounds like Freudian to me, so I don't even know. Protean makes me think of Prometheus. Uh, and that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <What>? Be smart. <laughs> the Red Queen is saying, I can't allow you to leave. If there's any infected among you. So obviously, Rain has been bit. A million times. A million times. So she's infected as hell. And so Alice is like, if you betray us, we'll fry you. And they have some sort of device. I'm assuming it's like a little, again, the little MP. They go through the utility tunnels. And mm-hmm. that's when we start to see them getting closed in on by hordes of zombies on both sides. Mm-hmm. So they start to fight them off. Alice is like, fuck, I don't need a gun. And just like hand-to-hand combats all the zombies. Snap Without next. getting bit. They're like, we need to use the pipes to get above them. Michelle Rodriguez gets bit again. Kaplan gets bit in the leg. Michelle Rodriguez has, again, one of those dumb zombie apocalypse moments where she sees JD and pauses and is like, JD? And then it attacks her and mm-hmm. bites her neck off. Again. At this point, does it even matter? <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> well, because well, I'm thinking about like all those other movies that we've seen where it's like a character gets bit once and they're like just dead immediately. I mean, while she's over here getting bits Chewed up. chopped off of her and she's she totally fine going. fighting. Yeah. They pull up rain and they're all crawling across the top of the pipes they make it across but the pipes are coming off the wall and kaplan and alice are the last two to try to make it to the vents and kaplan falls in with alice he climbed up a completely different pipe and is separate from the group entirely if i remember correctly isn't alice infected already she's got some form of the t-virus in her yes in later movies. none of that yeah none of that you you don't know that now yeah the zombies are climbing towards them it's a tense scene where he tells the rest of the team to keep going because he knows he's not going to make it. I feel like we get one of these scenes in every zombie movie where one of the protagonists is about to kill themselves because they have one bullet left, always one bullet. He's like, oh, lucky. Lucky me. And instead he uses it to kill the zombie nearby. He somehow found like a back door to keep crawling out. The group thinks he did kill himself though. Yes, because they have listened to him and have tried to make their way back to the tramble. The truddle. Yeah, the truddle. In this scene that follows is Rain becoming seriously ill. She's also taunting the zombies with her blood because she's been injured so many freaking times. We see Alice having a weird flashback. It seems she's back in the hive when everyone was working. Can she see through time or something? Because she's just standing there and suddenly can see the past. I think it's just her memories coming back to her in that way. We see the blue virus, which is the T virus. But then we also see the green virus that we saw in the beginning. And we find out through her memory being triggered that that is the antivirus. And when she says this out loud and she's like, there's an antivirus, you're going to be okay. Matt was like, how do you even know this? And this is when she confesses that she was his sister's contact. She, He's like, you betrayed her. He kind of doesn't even get a chance to get mad because along with that flashback, we get the flashback of Spencer, who was spying on Alice and what she was doing, <laughs> using like this that long sound listening device. Yeah. yeah. If you are like an operative, wouldn't you be better at secrecy? Why would you meet with someone right outside the mansion of the 
entrance to the corporation. Should have met her by now. Do better. So we get the flashback that shows us that Spencer was actually the entire catalyst for what happened here. He heard what Alice was planning to do, and I think in his weird way, he was like in love with her. He wanted to steal the virus so they would be set up for money and just shut down the corporation. That's why he wrote the note that says, today all your dreams come true. Right, he genuinely thought that he was doing some good. That she wanted. So, you know, a little miscommunication on their fake marriage part. While he's saying all this to the group, everybody's pissed and tries to step in on him, but he's got a gun. Is this the zombie from earlier? Remember in the beginning when they're walking past that girl who's asleep in the liquid? It opens its eyes and mm-hmm. it's like the first startle scare. I believe She comes so. out the water and it's, was that supposed to be like the dude's daughter? Like what the Red Queen is based on? No. It seems like a little girl. She's oh. a grown woman. Okay. A grown ass little girl. And sneaks up behind him. Nobody tells him anything because no, he's say. going on his monologue. But he also doesn't hear something sloshing on in the water behind him. And this woman straight up bites him in the neck. He has to shoot her. In the panic, he just leaves, points the gun at Alice and basically says, like, last chance. I miss you already. I miss you already. Closes the door. This next scene with the Red Queen is funny because she's like, I've been a naughty little girl. Creepy. Weird thing for a <laughs> child to say. <laughs> Spencer finds the briefcase that he had in the beginning, goes to the treadle, starts to set himself up to inject himself with the Heroin antibodies. style. Sure. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know how injections work. I get injections all the freaking time. Like I mentioned, I get infusions. And it is like that. They turn a kit your arm, isolate your vein, and put it in through there to the point where... One of my nurses was like, your veins are really scarred over. And it's this weird feeling of having to be like, I'm not I doing drugs. Yeah, like I can explain. <laughs> but obviously she fucking knows because she's the one that's injecting me every eight weeks. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Can they switch? Like, is they do. Yeah. yeah, I I don't like when they try to put it in my hands because I that's find hurt. that the most uncomfortable. I also hate when they put it right in, in the forearm. middle of your elbow and arm the forearm? area. Forearm? Yes, thank you. I said it like three times. You did, but like... <laughs> And you were still explaining. I was still explaining, and then I registered that you had already said it, and I was like, stop talking. But, but I was already you were too me deep. To stop talking. No, my Shut son. up, I'm trying to remember the word. That you just told me, no. I was telling myself, like, stop talking. Eric just told you what it was. Clearly, I am all here. Well, it's 10, so. Oh, my God. So, he is about to inject himself with the hugest needle <laughs> ever. Why? Is it just for, like, scare factor? I don't know. I've never so you can see it? Well, yeah, probably, right? Because you can see the spiral of the T-virus in there. Yes. It's but it's comically vial, big. Like, no vial looks this big. Yeah, I think the only needles that are actually, like, that ginormous are, like, epidural needles. The ones that go in your spine? Yeah, or with, like, for spinal taps. I mean, I hope those are the only big needles out there in the world. So the Red Queen broadcasts the murder of Spencer and shows them the liquor coming out the ceiling and then just feeding on Spencer, tearing him apart. Which is strange because it didn't, like, devour him. It looks like it just took a bite of him and there was a lot of blood and that was it. It was like, okay, bye. Okay, thanks, bye. So they're like, what the hell is that thing that you did not tell us about? She's like, this was one of the early experiments of the T-virus. It's what happens when it's injected into living flesh. I'm assuming at one point was like a living person that they just injected this into or a dog or something. You think so? She says living tissue. I don't know how experiments like this work, but I'm assuming they take a sample of somebody's arm or skin and then they just grow it in the lab. Now that it's tasted living flesh, it begins to mutate and become a faster, stronger hunter. Kanye, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> they are trapped inside this lab. The queen basically bargains with them and says, I'll give you the code to escape, but you have to kill Rain because she is like beyond infected. Rain's like, it's the only way you guys will get out. Go ahead and kill me. We get this very tense scene of like so much screaming. The Red Queen's screaming, kill her, kill her, kill her. It's so chaotic. Yeah. It's so chaotic. And Rain's also screaming, do it. Kaplan Surprise! comes out of nowhere. Plot twist. Kaplan survives and just happened to fry her at the part where she was getting the most annoying. They go to the treadle, find Spencer's dead body. Alice is the one who stays behind because she's trying to get the antivirus case. As she comes across his body, it reanimates. She has to do that cheesy action thing where you have a line before you kill somebody and she's like miss you already and shoots him emotionless (laughs) as fuck good 
He was uh, trash anyway. Rain has a very heartfelt situation with Alice and is like, I don't want to turn into one of those things. Which is also a staple of these movies. Yeah. We literally just saw it in Dawn. They inject her with the antivirus, but the queen has already told them, like, it's been so long, it might not even work for her. They also inject Kaplan. After Rain has that heartfelt moment with Alice, she passes out and Alice assumes... I thought she was dead. <laughs> she's dead. She looks very dead. She goes to grab the gun from her and kill her and then Rain pops up in, like, a fake jump scare and is like, I'm not dead yet. And obviously... Haha, uh-huh, they laugh. What a great moment. And Mac gets slashed out of nowhere through the side of the treadle. The liquor has caught up with them. Kaplan is trying to make the treadle go as fast as possible. It cannot without going off the rails. And he ends up getting captured by the liquor, pulled out of the treadle. What a way to just get rid of a character. Yeah, also what a waste <laughs> of antivirus. Because, like, she that, gave it to both of them. They have absolutely no thoughts to, should we keep this just in case? If this gets out of the city, they're going to have to, like, give this more people. Duplicate just, it. We just yeah. need to give it to ourselves, yeah. I'm assuming they're just thinking they're going to get out and that it's going to lock up and they could go. They'll be fine. Find help, yeah. They'll be fine. We got this really tense scene where the liquor is starting to attack Alice while Matt tries to help her by throwing these like pipes that are hanging from the that are just hanging there using one of the pipes alice stakes the liquors slash venom's tongue <laughs> into one of the grates that opens up that would tear him apart if they could get it open rain has transformed into a full-on zombie rain's zombie self still takes a moment to be cool and crack its neck before attacking you gotta be cool even in death <laughs> okay alice is yelling at matt to open the door rain is standing in her way we get this weird scene where where would this work in a million years matt just shoots her as alice is shouting to open the door conveniently it pushes her back enough to hit the big red button hit the big red button that opens the door <laughs> yeah so the liquor dies because it's tongue is sticked in the grates it's getting dragged on the bottom so it's mm-hmm. starting to light on fire because of all the friction they hit the button again and the door is closed and slice its tongue off so it just stays rolling on fire in the background uh, oh and yeah i did mess that part then they make it to the platform with about like a couple seconds 17 to seconds of yeah <laughs> they make their way up the stair way too casually for someone that has like 17 seconds <laughs> to get there but the door is closed behind Behind them, we're assuming that the failsafe was going to do its job. Alice and Matt are the only ones that survive. Alice takes this moment to have a pity party and basically say, it's my fault that all this happened. And while Matt's trying to console her, his wounds start to... Bubble. It's weird because he's like, I'm sorry. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And then she's like, what's wrong? And conveniently, this is when the doctors of the Umbrella Corporation burst in, not giving her enough time to get the antidote into him. So she's screaming and fighting them all off as they just strap him to a stretcher. We don't know what happens to him. The doctors are saying, let's check his vitals. Let's look at the mutation that's going on in his shoulder. You know what? Let's put him into the Nemesis program, which is what becomes that monster in the second one. Then with Alice, they sedate her. They're mentioning that they are going to quarantine her. Then he says, let's open the hive back up. It'll be fine. (laughs) Just the dumbest freaking line in this movie. I want to go back and see what happened there. Yeah, like what happened? Well, you kind of know what happens right after because just check the footage asshole it's probably not the only office you guys have and you probably have access to the video footage or not because they sent an entire team down there to die for no freaking reason that is hard to believe though with all the technology they have that they wouldn't have access to these cameras in another way or that the ai of the red queen isn't in probably every facility yeah especially since they're painting umbrella like it's an all-seeing organization big brother Yeah. yeah the next scene we get is alice in a hospital bed. I don't know what it is about these zombie movies that just decide you need to be naked in a hospital bed. She literally has like a napkin over her. She has, again, the biggest needles injected to the side of her head and inside her body. She wakes up screaming with all these things in her arms and rips them off. And I hate this trope so much in movies. Have you ever actually had to be in a hospital bed? It all hurts. It all hurts. And like ripping it off when you don't no, I feel like would hurt you way more. Right. I've never had that many, but I remember the awkwardness of this one, like you said, in the mm-hmm. palm of your hand. It's painful. Because it's a flexible needle. They put yep. it in with a solid needle and then they slide the solid one out, but the one that stays in is... Flexible. flexible and it's weird because you feel it in your hand moving and, and hers just... aren't flexible they're like big as hell the thought of her just jumping off the bed to then rip them off it's like no it's not that easy unless you just love pain <laughs> she is screaming at the glass in the room to have them let her out nobody does because we find out there's actually no one on the other side monitoring her we do see a zombie pass by oh yes we do and it's almost like she can see it right it's possible i mean she didn't look in the direction of the dog she was killing but um, <laughs> consistencies in this movie don't matter i guess the next scene she uses a needle to open a card lock 
I don't even yeah. know if this is possible. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's find somewhere. <laughs> I don't think that cards Logical. work like this, right? I don't know. Where it's got an actual switch in, the, in the back of where you slide the card. Don't know. Mm. I am not a locksmith. A locksmith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how these work. Is this even something you call a locksmith for? A card reader. He's like, I make keys. I don't make cards. So she is able to get out, finds a lab coat slash doctor's robe. It's nothing but pure chaos as she walks out. She's kind of wandering around and finds, I believe, a police car. Some car that has a rifle in it. It's a shotgun, yeah. Yeah. So she grabs it, and the last scene is her standing in the middle of this completely demolished city with a rifle, partially naked, ready to fight. Nothing in Nothing, sight. because we don't see anything. And then we get end credits. Was that Slipknot at the end? I don't know, but it was, it was very intense music. It is Slipknot. So clearly, the dumb Umbrella Corporation doctors, the idiots. Yeah, opened it up. Opened this pit up. The pit. The, the pit. pit. The hive and the infection spread. Who knows how long she was actually in quarantine. She wakes up to the devastation after that. That yeah. starts the franchise that has apparently achieved a billion dollars all the way to the final chapter. Highest grossing horror movie franchise. Godzilla. Conjuring. Monsterverse. The Mummy. King Kong. Alien. Resident Evil. Resident Evil is seventh now. So I'm assuming from the last time I saw that article, it was first. In the 20 minutes you saw there, <laughs> <laughs> it changed. Apparently now it's at like 1.2 million. Billion. Oh, wait. Trillion. One million billion <laughs> trillion dollars. Oh, wait. No, yeah. This says uh, one... Wait. This makes no sense. Oh, no, no. Okay, yeah. $1.2 billion. Okay. I was like, trillion dollars. Good thing. Yeah, what do you... Godzilla's first, though. The 2014 one. I wouldn't call Godzilla horror, but... Monster. Oh, well, yeah. I guess there's a monster feature. It's yeah. more action, though. Creature feature. Creature feature. And then Conjuring's got 2.1 million. I would Boy. imagine that is one of the most profitable How in recent the, years. the Nun the highest grossing of all those from The Conjuring? Absolutely not. It says it is. Oh, that's awful. The it's one it of the worst ones. Made it 365,000. Sorry, 365 million. I can't do math right now. Really. Just <laughs> Too many commas. I can't read it. I've never made that much money, so I don't know how to read so it. I don't know how to read it. Depressing. Yeah. But yeah, what'd you think of it? I love these games, so I will always love this. Nine. <laughs> Skipping ahead. Yeah, that's not even... What? I said this movie. <laughs> yeah, I give it a nine. For the longest time, I remember I used to have a gripe with that it wasn't close to the games, but, you know, these grew on me. I, I watched all of them. I think the only one I didn't see was the final chapter. The and, most recent uh, ones, yeah. Yeah, and I, I did have it on my list to watch, but I just, I think you said you haven't seen, like, some of the last ones? No, they definitely dip in story towards the later movies it becomes all about action and i'm just kind of like wait what's the storyline here though that mm. i remember but i did really love the first couple and mm. i like watched them all in high school i'm gonna take a point away for all the bad cgi and also give it a nine out of ten yeah because it's definitely got horror moments some jump scares the creepiness of the red queen i like that it's not your typical zombie movie it's this is how the zombie apocalypse got started which we don't see a lot in films that's it's, true it's usually we jump into the action of where it's already happening was it return of the living dead that said it was like a comet that made it happen it was like a virus from a night of the living dead oh is it night of the living dead that's it was like a it's satellite a and then in Shaun of the dead in the news reports we didn't mention this in the fun facts but they also reference that a satellite is passing over because you know it's the same cause as not of the living dead they mm. were actually heavily inspired by it which i think we did talk about good stuff i love this i can't wait to play it i can't wait to see how different it is from this movie i'll hold back my resident evil game knowledge knowledge until we cover more of the movies do you want to talk about what scared loki about this movie he hated the music he did not like it <laughs> too much literally just started rumbling and electronica yeah it was like one of the first opening songs and he was not a fan no he was growling like crazy yeah it's just music kid yeah you want to tell us about your music taste loki we're sorry you don't like early 2000s music. You know that Spotify had sent the survey to people who had Spotify and was like, do you want to make a playlist for your dog? And I thought it was going to do like dog specific stuff, but it's just like your music catered to the personality of your dog, which is not what I thought it would be. You thought it'd be like dog sounds that you could play while they're... Yeah, because there's like plenty of stuff on Spotify like, oh, soothing... Relaxing sounds. Stuff yeah. for dogs. Yeah, whatever. I thought it was that, but mm. it was like, no, it was from my music. What do you want you your dog to You fill out a profile like for your dog. It's like, is your dog energetic? Is your dog this? Is your dog that? Does it like to do this? But then it just like brings songs in from your music, which I guess, yeah, the ones are going to carry you, not the dog, but don't, or not. Don't Loki will me. hate the Resident Evil music. The Resident Evil music. And any music from the early 2000s, like you said. All of it. Yeah. The whole genre. You know what? The whole 2000s to 2010. Just throw it out. Yeah. He didn't like it. 
Yeah, is that pretty much it for us here? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired too. All right, let's go watch the movie. Let's go watch more horror. Willy's Wonderland. I can't wait. Yeah, cool. As always, we hope you guys had a good time here with us. You can follow us pretty much anywhere on Shaken Not Scared Pod, except for Twitter. Twitter is Shaken Scared Pod. Please keep an eye out for our surveys on what movies we do next, because like we said, Zombieland won in a landslide, but we'd like to get more people's opinions. You could send us an email at shakennotscaredpod at gmail.com. You can support the show on Patreon. We'll name our next drink after you with mentions on our website where the drink page will live forever. Try this Red Queen. Not bad. We'll call you a Red Queen, maybe. You can listen to us on all your favorite podcasting sites, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, a bunch of others. Give us a listen. Give us a follow. Throw Loki a treat. There's a bunch of pumpkin ones. Maybe we'll buy him one if you help him. Give us a like, rate, review, all that good stuff. And okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, bye. Come on, Cranky, throw it to the bridge. Oh, <laughs> no. Walnuts, peanuts, pineapple shells, grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. Oh, yeah. Dig it, dig it, dig it. You sing it all the time. Yeah, I do. <laughs>